A two six zero zero year old enigma may have been answered. Scientists and archaeologists are searching for the precious Ark of the Covenant, which was lost in the ancient city of Jerusalem in 586 BC. They have now found astonishing discoveries that disclose insights about the intriguing enigma of the Ark's departure. Scientists have finally opened the Ark of the Covenant, revealing its mystery contents. What did they find? What do these new discoveries mean? Join us as we get into the details. The Ark of the Covenant had two important roles in the Hebrew Bible. For starters, it served as a chest for the stone tablets with the Ten Commandments, Israel's basic set of laws. The gold-covered Ark included the tablets, a manajar, and Aaron's rod, which miraculously bloomed. However, the Ark's significance extended beyond its physical purpose. It was viewed as a spiritual route via which Yahweh, the God of Israel, interacted with Moses and the Israelite priesthood. The Ark helped the Israelites win battles. For example, during their crossing of the Jordan River, priests carrying the Ark stopped the flow of water, allowing them to pass. The divine interaction transformed it into a sign of God's presence among His people. The Ark of Covenant was built during the Israelites' encampment at Mount Sinai, where Moses was given the Ten Commandments. Constructed alongside the tabernacle, it served as a sacred sanctuary for Christians. When the Israelites set up the tabernacle, they placed the Ark in the innermost chamber, separated from the rest of the sacred edifice by a veil. Because of the holiness of the Ark of Covenant, tight rules control its handling and closeness to people. Levite priests guarded the specifically built tent within the tabernacle. Only the high priest could enter the innermost chamber, the Holy of Holies, which housed the Ark. Even this was permitted just once a year on the Day of Atonement, when the high priest sprinkled blood on the mercy seat to seek forgiveness for the people. Recent scientific findings have revealed previously unknown truths concerning the Ark, which may surprise some. These insights alter many aspects of what we know. We are aware that any deviation from the established rites before touching the Ark resulted in grave consequences. Uzzah perished while attempting to stabilize the Ark during transportation. Similarly, when the Philistines took the Ark, disaster struck until they returned it, demonstrating its hallowed nature and the need for reverence. The Ark cannot be stolen or hijacked due to its immense power. The disappearance of the Ark of Covenant remains a mystery. The Ark's removal from historical archives has left an unsolved mystery. The only recorded mention of it in the Hebrew Bible is in 2 Chronicles 35, 3, which describes King Josiah's efforts to rebuild the temple in Jerusalem. Many ideas exist regarding its fate. One widespread legend holds that when the Babylonians conquered Jerusalem in 586 BCE, they burnt or seized the Ark. While historical chronicles mention Babylonian looting of the temple, the Ark is not specifically mentioned among the treasures. There is no substantial evidence linking the Babylonians to the Ark. Menelik, King Solomon and Queen Sheba's son, has an unusual story. According to Ethiopian mythology, Menelik transported the Ark from Jerusalem to Ethiopia and kept it secure in a temple in Aom. Monks reportedly kept this temple hidden for generations. The Kebra Nagast, a 14th-century Ethiopian manuscript, serves as a primary source for the Ark of the Covenant hypothesis. The story follows Menelik's journey to Jerusalem, where he meets his father, King Solomon. Solomon wanted Menelik to stay and rule his kingdom, but he decided to return to Ethiopia. With heavenly aid, he and several pals transported the Ark. Ethiopian traditions back up this theory. During Timket, Ethiopian Orthodox Christians' holiest festival, every Ethiopian church parades a copy of the Ark known as a Tabat. Some say the Beta Israel community in Ethiopia is descended from Menelik or other Israelites who migrated there. Furthermore, Ethiopian emperors have claimed genealogy from Solomon and Sheba, citing this lineage to justify their authority. However, no historical or archaeological evidence supports this claim. The location of the alleged Ark is still unknown and cannot be verified. There's even a famous story about an Adventist adventurer who claimed to have discovered the Ark. However, this too lacks sufficient evidence or corroboration. According to Jewish tradition, as recorded in different old literature, such as the Zohar, 
Talmud and Midrash, King Josiah predicted Jerusalem's collapse and concealed the Ark and other holy objects in a secret cave beneath the Temple Mount. The entry was sealed and believed to be only visible to the Messiah. Some biblical scriptures allude to the Ark's existence inside the Temple during its destruction. This notion garnered support from archaeological findings, which showed that there are unknown rooms and tunnels beneath the Temple Mount. Events such as the 1981 attempt to destroy the Dome of the Rock, protests over a tunnel's opening in 1996, and accusations in a 2007 documentary all point to a possible connection to the Hidden Ark. Many scholars, however, disagree with these statements, citing a lack of sufficient historical or literary evidence. While this notion is popular, several researchers have pursued other pathways in their search for the Lost Ark. They studied the Dead Sea Scrolls, specifically the Copper Scroll. Unlike other scrolls, this one is constructed of metal and includes 64 spots where gold and silver goods were concealed. It is thought that these valuables came from Jerusalem's temple and were hidden before its destruction in 586 BCE. Now comes the interesting part. The Copper Scroll suggested that the Ark could be near the Dead Sea, possibly in the Jordan River. According to the scroll, the Ark is located in the Valley of Akor, near Qumran, where the Dead Sea Scrolls were discovered. All of these statements lack tangible evidence or reputable documents to back up their assertions. Certain discoveries lack archaeological or scientific corroboration, making them difficult to accept as factual findings. Another significant problem is the contradicting narratives and multiple places indicated for the Ark's discovery. Different ideas have identified distinct locations. The exact location of the Ark remains unknown. The disparities in proposed discovery places have complicated the search for the truth. Despite several ideas and disagreements, certain scientists have now proven that the genuine Ark of Covenant is held at a precise location. They discovered and opened the Ark, revealing hidden items, how the Ark of the Covenant was discovered. In the 1980s, Ron Wyatt, a self-taught researcher, claimed to have discovered the Ark beneath Jerusalem. Wyatt claimed to have discovered an altar stone, implying that early Christians recognized the significance of the region. Exploration of the region revealed holes believed to be crucifixion posts, including one perhaps associated with Jesus. Wyatt's story linked biblical prophecies with archaeological discoveries, adding to the mystery surrounding the Ark Hunt. He also discovered a location said to be the same as the one mentioned in the Bible, when the rocks split in sadness over Joseph's death. During cave excavation, his crew claimed to have discovered the Ark of Covenant. Before dying of cancer in 1999, Wyatt discussed his results in an interview with Anchorstone International. He recalled seeing a strange black substance dried in a cave ceiling breach above the Ark, with remnants outside on a stone. He believes the crack is related to Christ's crucifixion. According to legend, Blood and water from Christ's side wound poured onto the mercy seat via a similar crack. Just as Moses used blood and water to sanctify the tablets, however, Wyatt stated that his photographs and recordings of the Ark could not be disseminated owing to supernatural intervention. When he returned for more proof, four angels urged him not to share the discovery until a future holy event. Even Wyatt was caught off guard by the celebrated discovery of the Ark. He was merely on a trip with his children to Israel when he became sunburned while scuba diving and had to return to the United States. While waiting for his trip back home, he walked around the Calvary Escarpment, a historic stone quarry, and talked with a local expert in Roman relics. Wyatt's left hand suddenly pointed to a rubbish dump, saying, That's Jeremiah's grotto, and the Ark of the Covenant lies inside. The speaker's remarks and hand gestures seemed uncontrollable. This was the first time the concept of digging for the Ark entered his head. To Wyatt's amazement, the man alongside him, who was not known to act out of character, also responded strangely. He was ecstatic, offering assistance, permits, lodging, and meals for his freshly devised excavation project. Wyatt chose not to accept the generous offer. He wanted to learn more before jumping into the excavation. In his search, he discovered that the last biblical mention of the Ark's position in Jerusalem occurred about 621 B.C., barely 35 years, before Nebuchadnezzar's invasion and the city's destruction. 
The Ark disappeared from records between 621 BC and 586 BC, when Jerusalem and the Temple were destroyed. Wyatt discovered specific details of artifacts plundered from the Temple while studying the scriptures in depth. There were spoons and furniture, but no mention of the Ark. According to Jeremiah 28, 3, the Ark was not included in the return of things from Babylon. Other invaders, Shishak and Sennacherib, also attacked the temple, but did not take the Ark of the Covenant. That is how Wyatt came up with the hypothesis that the Ark was buried within the city and Babylonian siege walls shortly before the temple was destroyed. Because the city and temple were destroyed in 586 BC, the Ark was thought to have escaped due to its location outside of the city limits. After his investigation, he continued with his excavation, and things became increasingly odd. Wyatt said that he met Jesus while at the location. According to his tale, Jesus wore a hand-woven cloth and stated that he was traveling from South Africa to the New Jerusalem. Many people are skeptical about this astonishing claim, but the stories get more amazing. There are instances of people dying after interfering with excavations or attempting to enter the site with malicious intent. These stories cast a pall of mystery over the entire situation, imbuing it with a supernatural quality. Wyatt claimed to have visited the Ark Chamber several times, each with unique details. In his first visits, he did not see the Ark. Despite being severely ill at the time, he theorized that the Ark was hidden within a stone box before... On another occasion, he used a medical colonoscope to peep through a gap in the stone box, seeing a glint of gold that he assumed belonged to the Ark. The most impressive incident occurred during his fourth visit, as he entered the chamber. He stated that it was unexpectedly empty of the tons of rocks that had previously filled it. The Ark and Temple relics were allegedly beautifully placed, and that's when he saw four angels, who were described as protectors since the Ark was hidden 2,600 years ago. Jonathan Gray has written extensively on Ron Wyatt's alleged finding of the Ark of the Covenant. Gray's stories substantially echo Wyatt's assertions, portraying a succession of extraordinary discoveries related to biblical relics. Gray prepared a book titled Ark of the Covenant, The Case for the True Discovery, in which he intended to show evidence corroborating Wyatt's claims and make a strong argument for the discovery's validity. Gray's book provides a full account of Wyatt's findings, including the circumstances, techniques, and evidence he presented to support his claim of uncovering the Ark. It attempted to highlight several aspects of the finding, including Wyatt's excavation procedure, the items allegedly discovered near the Ark, and the alleged divine aid Wyatt claimed to have received during the expedition. However, it did not effectively portray this. It read more like a narration than a factual record, similar to Wyatt's own. The novel had mixed reviews. Some readers appreciated the book for its intriguing narrative, an attempt to present evidence to back the results. Some opponents also questioned the veracity of the material offered in the book, pointing to a lack of empirical support and scientific scrutiny. Many people disbelieve Ron Wyatt's claims because he is no longer living and left no substantial evidence. Their skepticism is definitely not unwarranted. His excavations were rife with divine involvement, which might either indicate that everything was a hoax or explain how he saw and possibly even touched the Ark of Covenant without suffering serious consequences. Archaeologists are investigating the ancient settlement of Kiriath Jearim due to uncertainty. This was the location recorded in the Bible as the Ark's resting place for almost two decades before its relocation to Jerusalem. While they have not found the Ark and are unlikely to do so, their discoveries provide a vivid picture of ancient Israelite history and the origins of Judaism. According to biblical scholars, the account of the Ark originated in the 8th century BCE and was later incorporated into the books of Samuel, presumably prior to the Babylonian exile. The account of David transferring the Ark to Jerusalem appears to be a later addition to the original Ark narrative. Some historians, including Romer, believe the original account concluded with the Ark's arrival in Kiriath Jearim. Romer speculates that the Ark may have remained in Kiriath Jearim for a longer time. The Ark was most likely transferred to Jerusalem during Josiah's reign as part of a larger effort to centralize religious and governmental activity. After Josiah's reign, 
Judah was conquered by the Babylonians, which may explain the lack of mention of the Ark in subsequent accounts. This is why some archaeologists hope to learn more about the Ark in Kiriath Jerim. But as they continue to work, let us look at Ron Wyatt's findings, who not only claimed to have found the Ark of the Covenant, but also revealed its other material. How unique is the Ark of Covenant? Wyatt claimed to find the Ark in a hidden chamber in Jerusalem. But he also discovered the table of shewbread, the golden altar of incense positioned before the veil, the golden censer, a seven-branched candlestick holder with tiny golden oil lamps, a brass shekel weight, numerous oil lamps, and a brass ring that appeared to be used to hang a curtain or something similar, among other things. Dark, dry, rotted animal skins, degraded wooden timbers, and huge pebbles covered all goods. On the back of the ark, there was a small open cubicle carrying the Book of the Law, which was likely written by Moses himself. The scrolls, written on animal skins, were discovered in pristine condition. The ark housed sacred artifacts, such as Aaron's rod and a pot of manna, to symbolize God's presence and supply. Rabbi Mark Gelman, a writer who appeared on the American television show The God Squad, once discussed the meaning of all the artifacts inside the ark. The author linked the jar of manna, ten commandment tablets, and Aaron's blooming rod to important life teachings. For him, manna represents sustenance in the desert and reflects Gandhi's wisdom. This realization inspired Rabbi Gelman to dedicate himself to working with food rescue networks, believing that reducing hunger is a visible manifestation of faith. This is a lesson that both Jews and Christians have learned. Rabbi Gelman believes that the presence of Aaron's blooming staff in the ark stems from the flowers rather than the staff itself. It represents the essence of faith, stressing joy. He uses Bertrand Russell and Rabindranath Tagore to emphasize the importance of joy and service in life, as well as Psalm 100, which encourages joyful service to the Lord. The ark's lid is also known as the mercy seat. The Hebrew title for this lid is kaparet, which can be translated as a mercy seat or an atonement cover. This golden cover mirrors the dimensions of the ark and features a pair of cherubim on top. According to God's instructions to Moses, this mercy seat would serve as a venue for divine communication and atonement sacrifice. It symbolized God's presence among the people. While scientists claim to have opened the Ark of Covenant, Ron Wyatt's account is the only comprehensive one known, displaying the Ark of the Covenant today. It may not have the same religious or political significance as it did in ancient times. Judaism and Christianity have survived for centuries without it. Still, it is critical to use prudence. Any attempt to claim ownership of the Ark could spark bloodshed between Jews, Muslims, and Christians, all contending for Jerusalem's holy sites. This is most likely why the truth about the Ark's finding has been kept hidden, in order to maintain religious harmony. If you enjoy this content and want to support us, click on the Super Thanks button below. Your support helps us continue sharing Jesus' transformative journey. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss future videos.